Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. You get a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. Now, they're going to try and buy your treasures off you for a sum of money today. £300. I think we're getting closer. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say to you, don't accept that. Have a gamble. Live dangerously. Go to auction. We may get you a little bit more money there. 220. It's very near to the reserve. All done and selling. Today, the show comes to you from Stockport in Cheshire. I wasn't born that far from this town hall. It's a good area. There's lots of antiques around here. People have brought along their treasures. Are they going to sell them today? Are they going to go to auction? I don't know. But one thing I do know, they want the real deal. The Den's chock-a-block with hopeful sellers, so let's get stuck in. Will David Hateney splash the cash for Paul's watercolour? This is something you've had a long time? About 15 years. You bought it 15 years ago? No, a, 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 a dear uncle of mine gave it to me about 15 years ago. Did he? He did, yes. Very nice gift. Very nice painting, yeah. Yeah, I like it, yes. yes it's Whitby, yeah. Whitby, yep. And there's the ruins up here. And the typical little street scene. Yeah. And it's yeah. by a, quite a well-known artist. Yeah. Walter Emsley. Yeah. This was probably painted looking at the frame and everything and the mount probably about 1900 or 1890 yeah, thereabouts. Yeah, I'd agree with that. So, tell me, Paul, why are you selling such a lovely picture? Well, I like it, but my wife's not too keen, which I can understand and respect. Watercolours have had the moments. Um, paintings, oil paintings are more popular, I would say. But I like the picture, especially with it being sort of fairly local interest to me, East yeah. Coast. So yeah. you've done a bit of research on this painting, so you might know what it's worth then in money. Not really. I think uh, I'm not 100% I'm not au fait with the valuation, mm. but I know what it's worth to me anyway, because I think it's only going to go one way. Well, I don't know. It's gone that way, sadly, because a few years ago I could have had a lot, thought of a lot yeah. of people would have bought that picture. But yeah. uh, like, you know, like yourself, young people are just not interested really, and they think it's a bit old hat, old fashioned, blah, blah, blah. I like it personally, so I'll get some money out and see if I can buy it and uh, hope I can sell it. OK. Well, you don't want £50 for it, do you, Paul? No. No, so I'll put a hundred down. How does that sound? It doesn't sound too good without wishing to offend you. I like this picture, Paul. I'm going to try and buy it off you, 150 quid. I'm, I was looking for more than that. Were you? Yeah. I'm going to tempt you there, 170 quid. If you can put a bit more on the table, I'll seriously consider it, because a day with the Duke's worth a few quid to me. <laughs> that auction. He's not always right, you know. The oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Paul, £180. You know, I don't begrudge you making a profit, but I do think it's worth a little bit more than that. It's never been tampered with. A bit off the frame here, another Yeah, tenor. no, true, yeah. Another tenner, true. another tenner, a bit of luck. Yeah, but the, the actual artwork is in, in good condition. It is, that's why I've offered you nearly £200 for it. What do you think? OK, David, we've got a deal. You've been a gentleman. I like the picture. I'm pleased I bought it. Paul certainly gave David a run for his money. Now, let's see if Patricia can do the same with her gold brooch. Never wear it, so hoping to move it along for £450, 500 maybe. <laughs> let's see if you can pin Brenda Haller down to a deal. Wow, this is really pretty. Where's it from? It was a gift from my husband about 25 years ago. Was it new then? No, it was second hand, I think. And, I mean, it's a lovely brooch. It's 18 carats. Mm -hmm. And it's got little rubies in, little sort of pretty rubies in there. Why are you selling it? I don't wear it, basically. You're not a brooch person? No. Now, I know it's not new and not within the last 30 years. It's much older than that. But it's in fantastic condition. So the reason I know it's a good piece is because all these petals are movable. So that's a real work, work of art in itself. Yeah. Very pretty. I'm going to try and buy it. We'll get the purse out and see where we go. So I'm going to go 50. 
one, 50, 200, 20, 40, 60, 80, 3, 20, 40, 60, 80, 400. I'd like a little bit more. Now, Pat, the one thing that our dealer likes is a piece of jewellery. And what you have here is a very nice piece of jewellery. Not in fashion at the moment, brooches, but it's a smart item. Four to five hundred pounds is the estimation. The value of the metal, of the stones, we are estimating at about 450 pounds. At 400, it's not enough. Make her open the purse and get some more money out. She may be shaking her head, she may be <laughs> bluffing us, but we don't care because we know that's a cracking lot. Um, OK, there's 400 on the table. I'm quite happy to, let me see, go 20, 40, 450. And I can assure you it won't be scrapped at that. That's, it's good. I'll deal at that. You'll deal at that? You're happy at that? I am, yes. Well, we're both happy. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so pleased I got the brooch because it's just going to add to my collection beautifully. It's not going anywhere else. It's moi. <laughs> really pleased with the deal. Um, going away to Cyprus and the brooch is going to a lovely home. And well done, Patricia. You got the 450 you were after, so bon voyage. Across the den, Christine's hoping Karen Delmeny will fall in line when it comes to making an offer for her medals. I believe they're worth between 50 and 80 pounds. I would like at least in midway 65. Let's see how you do. I always like doing medals because more than the value, I love to hear the, the story behind them. So, um, is this a family member these were awarded to? Yes. They were? My granddad. And these were obviously in a cupboard, I think. Yeah. And I didn't know about them until my mother died. I've inherited them and I've had them for a number of years. Yeah. Because I didn't know what to do with them. Oh, <laughs> and have you got no family, Christine, that, that you think? It's only my daughter and she yeah. said she's she probably didn't, not. No. She's probably not that interested. No. Okay. And also, was he in the Lancers? Uh, was that his? I don't really know what he was in. Their First World War, sort of fairly standard yeah. issue um, medals. Um, we see them quite often when, as dealers. Um, and I always think they mean so much more to the family than what they do yeah. um, in sort of in, yeah. intangible money, as it were. And, and it's always a bit tricky to make offers on these. Mm. Um, you think you'd like to sell them now and, and perhaps treat yeah. yourself? OK. <sighs> I always feel very mean, but I can only put down what I think um, the market rate is there's 30 pounds there, Christine. Um... Christine, I'm rather sorry to inform you a rather poultry offer. Yes. <laughs> 50, 60, 60, 80. They are standard issue First World War. They're worth a little bit more than that. Medals are doing reasonably well in the auction at the moment. Yeah. Unless Meanie Karen doesn't put more than 30 quid, I'm going to say, please, let's go to the auction. Um, right. I'm going to put another tenner down. You have got the option of auction. I don't know if you'll do much better. It's a gamble. Yes, I'll go to auction. Yeah, Thank OK. You. Well, I hope they do really well for you. They deserve to. <laughs> Right, it's off to auction. Will Christine's medals have the sale room standing to attention? Auctioneer Max Blackmore has his gavel at the ready. You sat down with Karen uh, Dalmeny and she said £40. Yeah. It doesn't sound much for someone uh, that served in the First World War. In fact, it sounds little money at all. They're coming up now with a reserve of 50 quid. I would like to think they will bring more than the 50 pounds. That is the reserve. Here they are now. Let's see what happens. Now, I have a lot of interest here. I shall have to start at the usual 
figure of £105. £105, that's more like it. And so there should be. Any further bids now? One ten. One ten. I'm surprised at you, Karen. You're normally a good, strong bidder. One twenty on the net. No bidding on the phone. I've got one twenty on the net. It's against the room bidders and the phone. One twenty it is. Okay, one hundred and twenty pounds. We got a little bit of commission to take off that. It's just under a hundred pounds. About ninety-eight pounds. Any idea what to do with the money? Well, yes, I'm a member of a Stockport Paranormal Club area and it'll pay for one of the invests that we go on. OK. Sounds absolutely marvellous. So, on the day, the real deal was here in the sale room, £120. Take away the commission and Christine is going home with 98 quid. Real deal. That's spooky, Christine. You got over double what you were offered. And, Karen, you certainly missed out there. Coming up. <laughs> she can play a good tune, can this girl? But can Brenda lay down the right notes? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. The people of Stockport are still eager to do business, so let's get over to Simon Schneider's table, where David's brought in his silver bowl. I got it for £4 from a charity shop, so I'm really hoping to get as much money as possible for it and uh, put it towards a holiday. Um, I'd like to sort of pay around the 300 mark for it, so we'll have to see um, how we progress. But I would like to be taking this home with me today. Let's see if you've got a silver tongue then, Simon. How did you come to have this in your possession, David? Oh, I purchased it, purchased it not so long ago. I've done my research on the piece. It's by a Sheffield maker called Thomas Levesey. It dates 1902. It's in uh, an Art Nouveau style. It's a good quality gauge of silver, and I'm looking to, to sell it, if possible, today for the right price. Well, you've certainly done your research on it. You've left me absolutely nothing to say about it, really. The only thing you didn't say is how much it weighed. Have you any idea of the weight of it? It weighs 22 ounces. Well, you've described it very well. Um, I'm not quite sure if it's what I would call Art Nouveau, but it's certainly a very nice Edwardian piece of silver. And you're quite right, it's a nice heavy gauge of silver as well. And it's in very, very good condition. Now, it took me ages to find the hallmark on this, but it is 1902 Sheffield, and it's quite a saleable item. And there's something like this I would hate to see scrapped. Um, but the scrap price does actually have a bearing on what you can pay for it, because you have to know, at the very least, what it scraps for. Yeah. So I'm going to put some money down. Now, I think you know what this is worth to the penny, don't you, David? I've got a rough idea. I think you know exactly what it's worth. But I would like to pay you 20 40 60 80 100 pounds 20 40 60 80 200 pounds 220 240 260 pound david for the silver bowl it's a fair opening bid but i think there's a bit of mileage in it left one of the first things I learned when I came into this business is you've always got to leave a little bit of profit for the oh, next man. Absolutely, absolutely. And David will confirm that, won't you, David? How much is on the table? 260. OK. 3 to 350 is where both the independents and the auctioneers want to be. It's far too nice to even consider putting into a melt. Absolutely. It is a usable quality piece of silver. But I must tell you that there is just slightly under 300 pounds, about 296 in silver itself. So if we can get Simon to put 300 quid on the table or thereabouts, would you get more in the auction? Close call. Nice article, see what Simon puts on the table. OK. Right, David. £280. No, I think it's still worth a bit more than that. £300. I think we're getting closer. You know, you've got to leave a little bit for the next man, David. I've come back in here and I can hear Simon, who is a good wheeler dealer. He's saying, give us a chance here. Now, I'm right in thinking you bought this either at a car boot sale or at a church sale or something like that. I bought it from a charity shop, David. You bought it from a charity shop. So what did you pay for it at the charity shop? I paid £4 for it, David. However, do they sell something with a hallmark on it for £4 is beyond me. But I'm going to say you've got a very good return here. Give the lad a chance. 
Well, one thing's for sure, David, nobody is going to make the profit on it that you have because there isn't anything like that left in it. I think, under the circumstances, with what you've told me and what David's mentioned as well, that we can deal at £300. Shake my hand. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I've got to ask you this. What charity shop did you buy that in? Cancer UK. Well, I'll tell you what I'd like to do, because I think that's a fantastic cause. I'm going to put down another £10 as a donation to them. Will you contribute the same out of that? Yeah, I think that's a fantastic gesture, and I will match that. Lovely. Thanks very much for coming in today, David, and well done. And thank you. Uh, everyone's a winner. The charity shop get a little bit of money. I can put them in towards a holiday. So I'm really pleased with the deal. I think it's fantastic. A profit of £296 certainly isn't bad, David. Next up, will Ian have Brenda dancing to his tune when it comes to making an offer for his violin? And we're hoping roughly to get between £250 and £300 for it. Right, let's see how you go. You brought me a violin. A violin, yeah. And um, three bows. Aren't you greedy? Three bows, yeah. It's just what was in the case at the oh, time, really. Oh, so you don't play it then? No, it belonged to my granddad. Um, he played? He, I'm not sure if he played the violin, but he, he had a few musical instruments. He had a banjo that he played, but uh, yeah. and I don't know how he acquired this, but um, really? it's been in the family for quite a few years. Yeah. Has it? Well, it's, uh, it looks like a sycamore, the front of it, and um, I think it's probably German. Right. It looks German. I can see on, on the rest here that you've got, it says Dresden, so yeah. obviously that's German. Yeah. So it's in fairly nice condition. Yeah. Um, the bows are quite nice. Um, they've obviously had a, a little bit of work done to them in the past. I can see here there's a little bit of, um, of the wood taken away, so that's through use. Um, I mean, it's dated about 1890, so yes. it's got some age to it. it. Yeah. Um, well, I've had loops. I've had banjos, I've had all sorts of things. Let's see if we can tempt you and see if I get a violin. Let's hope so, yeah. All right, then. 50. No, I was hoping for a little bit more than that, yeah. A little bit more than yes, that? Yes, I'd say so. 70. No. So, there's £90 on the table. I think I need some advice from the master. OK. No, no, no. She can play a good tune, can this girl? <laughs> a specialist subject, this. I can only rely on my team. They say this is not a bad bit of kit. 250 to 350. It is a specialist item, probably worth a gamble at the auction house. There are buyers of uh, instruments. Take it to the auction. We might do better there. Thank you. I think he's right, it might go for about 200 right. but I personally don't want to gamble on it. Yeah. We'll go to auction, all I think, right. yeah, we'll take the gamble. Okay. Yes. And I'm wishing you all the best. Thank you very much. Get a lot of money. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Many an old tune played on an old fiddle, but this old fiddle ain't going for it. But will you regret it, Brenda? Let's head over to the sale room to find out. Now, on the dealer's day, I had your brother with me, that was Ian. Uh, today he can't make it, so he sent you along, Carol. Yes. And you're his sister. Yes. There is a reserve of £230. The whole question is this. Who's here in the sale room? Is there an instrument buyer? Is there a private collector? I don't know. It needs to find its level. It's certainly worth a lot more than 90 quid. The reserve is 230 Let's see if it's music to our ears. Here we go. Interesting uh, instrument here. What should we say? 250 for this. Start me somewhere. 250, 180 bid at 180. At 180 pounds. At 180 bid, 190. 200. 220. It's very near to the reserve. I'm on the net at 230. 230, it's on the reserve. At 230 pounds. Further bids in the room. No, when well, I'm selling to the net then, £230 it is. All done and selling. Nothing in the room with the internet, £230. I think a little bit on the low side. Just under £190, £188. Now, what's your first reaction, Carol? A bit disappointed. Yeah, well, I feel the same way. Yeah. Under the gavel, in the sale room, £230. A little bit on the low side. But that's what it's all about. You take the gamble, you take the chances. That 
was the real deal. It certainly was. So chin up, Carol. You got over double what Brenda offered. Over to David's table where Dawn's ready to do business. Today I brought in an Omega watch. I'm hoping to get between 100 and 120 pounds for it. They say time's money, Dawn, but will David think so? You brought in a lady's watch in here. Tell me something about it. Yeah, um, it's an Omega watch, and I've had it for about 10 years or so now. It did belong to my auntie, um, and it's just been stuck in a drawer, gathering dust, basically, so I brought it along today to see what it's worth. Right, I see. Well, let's have a look at this watch. Well, this is a lady's Omega. This is probably made in the, what, 70s, I would have thought. This is nine karat gold. 375, it's marked. So you've got quite a lot of gold in a watch like this. Commercially, these aren't such a good seller because people like bigger watches nowadays. Even the yeah. girls are wearing men's watches now. And um, I've found that they're very, very difficult to sell this, this size of a watch. Yeah. Even to buy a watch like that today would cost a fortune, wouldn't it, a gold watch like that? Yeah. So I'd better get some money out and see if I can tempt you here, Dawn. Okay. What shall we say? So we say 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds, Dawn. How does that sound? I was hoping for more than 80, oh, yeah. actually. <laughs> That's quite a lot of gold in it, I've got to say. Yeah, so let's, and you uh, said it's, it's, yeah, it's a nice watch. It is a nice watch. I'm going to try my best here. 100 pounds. How does that sound? Um... Just before you say anything, Dawn, I'm going to say tick-tock, because David here, his speciality is watches. And what you've got here is a ladies' Amiga. It's nine carat gold. So we've got a couple of estimations. They're more or less 80 at the lowest part, up to about 120. If we consider the precious metal, just the value of that, without the movement, there's about 113 pounds. So I'm going to say, David, you're on the mark. Any chance of another 20? I'll give another tenner. OK. And I'm going to try and earn a tenner. That is not a bad deal. Dandy Dave's bought a watch. Tick tock. <laughs> We've had a deal then, Dawn? We've got a deal. Thank you very much Thank for bringing it. Well done. You got exactly what you wanted, so well done you. Coming up. Give me the moonlight, give me the girl, and leave the rest to me. What's got the Duke in the mood? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Stockport in Cheshire. The goods are still coming in thick and fast, so let's join Karen for John's furry friends. If you go down to the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. Great, I love teddies. Can't wait for this one. Better lay your paws on some cash then, Karen. It's a bit crowded on this podium it is, here, yes. isn't it? Yes. So who are your friends? Well, I've, 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 I've had these bears since I was a baby. Yeah, that one, me, my uncle bought me when I was three years old. My parents bought me that, no, that one first and that one after. OK, so this one's the eldest. This one's the oldest. Then that one. Then that one, then the and big then one. And then yeah. Mr Big Ted here. That's it, yes. Oh. John, how can you bear to bring them to the show? Well, I'm, I've, got, I've got nobody to leave them to. I've got no children, I've got grandchildren, things like that. So I'm 63 now, so I like to... I'm happy to give them to somebody who appreciates them. There's a great market for teddies. Yes. There, there are two types of teddy bear collector, I find. The ones that want the really expensive ones. Yes. And the ones I like best of all that see, as this one as an example, that, that's been much love and is not in the best of conditions. No, that's right, yes. And they think, oh, I'd love to give that teddy a home, and they'll stitch him up and they'll make him yeah. better. The best one, obviously, is, is the teddy in the middle. Um, he's not a bad plush. He's English. They're all English. Um, we're dating sort of about 40s, 50s. OK, so what would you do with the money, then, if um, if you were well, to part with your teddy? Well, towards a holiday. All depends how much you were offering me. You yeah. You're planning yes. on getting a holiday out yes, of these? Oh, yes, something like that. I'm going to yes. be awfully disappointing yeah. for you today, John. I can <laughs> see right, it coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put £80 down on the table. 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds. David, 80 pounds on the table. Okay, three teddies, 
well loved, well played with. You were a very lucky boy to have three teddies. Um, 80 quid on the table, not a bad offer. Um, 100, 110, 100, 150 is the estimation. I'd have thought they were worth somewhere around 100 or just a bit more. I'm going to say, Karen, please, can we have a little bit more money for our teddies? If you could get another tenner, I don't think it's worth a gamble to go to auction. OK, well, thank you. Look, there's another, there's another tenner on the well, table. Good idea on him, uh, um, and I think we're both getting a fair deal then, yes, don't you thank think? You. Yeah, yes. you're happy yes, with that? Yes, really pleased with that, yes. Oh, thank you. thanks, same job. Thank you. Thank you. Three little teddies that have been together practically all their lives. I'm going to have to try and sell them as a lot. That's going to be such hard work, but I'm going to do it. Now it's hats off to our next guest. I want to introduce you to this lady, Sue Lee. Now, Sue, to give you your correct title, you are the tour guide yes. of the Hat Museum in Stockport. Yes, that's right. How long have you been doing that job? I've been doing that job nearly 13 years since we opened in 2000. Now, probably a lot of people don't know this, but Stockport had a huge number of hat makers. I mean, at the height of the business, how many hat producers were here in Stockport? Nearly 50 in the large mills, all employing somewhere between 500 and 1,500 people. So amongst the selection you brought along are these amazing top hats. Now, that's a normal size hat, but cast your eyes on this little beauty here. Now, it looks enormous. Is that a wearable hat or is it a promotional hat? It is a promotional hat. It's from a company in Denton, which isn't far from here, and they made it because they'd been open 100 years, and that was in 1913, so they'd actually opened in 1830. Okay. OK, let's look at these other examples here. There is the gents, the city uh, bowler. Yes. How old is that? It's not very old at all. This is part of the handling collection that we have, so this is probably mid-1900s, so okay. it's not very old. Really, smart looking bowler, uh, a city gentleman's uh, attire at one time, anyway. Yes, here we have a trilby. Yes, and if you pick that up, there we have a block, of course, which we, would be used for the manufacture of the trilby. Yes, it would. And the trilby tended to be an everyday hat, um, so most people would wear these, especially in Stockport. You would see lots of men going to work and their everyday. Uh, business in a hat like this. My father always wore a trail there. Yeah. What I do find fascinating is this selection here. They are obviously samples, and these items would have been taken out by a travelling salesman yes. to various um, haberdasheries and stores around the country, and they would use these as samples. But there's another story to them, because they were produced in the factory by... The apprentices. How interesting. So when you've done your time, your apprenticeship, you have to develop one of these. If you can make something small, you can make it bigger, easier. So if you could prove that you could make one of these, then you pass your apprenticeship and they would offer you a job. Fascinating. Are we open to the public? We are open to the public. We're open Tuesday to Sunday. Yep. Uh, we're open for tours. We also have hats for people to try on okay. as well. So is it free to the members of the public and children? It is free, but if you would like a guided tour, there is a small charge for that. Get yourself down to the Hat Museum. It is fascinating. It certainly is, David. Starting off, huh? Coming up, a head-turning vase. Collectible, desirable, smart. What's on the table at the moment is totally, totally unacceptable. Oh, Simon, better book up your ideas. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. It's been a great day, but there's only enough time for one more deal over on Simon's table. I brought this vase in today for my mum because uh, she's trying to get some work done on her house. Um, so I'm looking to get hopefully about £400, if possible. <laughs> I really like this. I'd pay a good price for it. You just have to wait and see how much. 
Mm, now we know it's not just any old vase. The Duke and auctioneer Max Blackmore are standing by to make sure Alex gets a fair price. You've bought in a very pretty item, Alex. Yes. What can you tell me about it? Um, it belongs to my mum and it was something that was given to my granddad um, as payment for a job that he did. He was an architect and he did some drawings for somebody um, many years ago, I presume around early 1920s. And um, they asked, would he accept this vase as payment? He said it would be worth something one day, and he did accept it. So my mum asked me to bring it and just see, was it actually worth anything? Well, actually, your grandfather was a very astute man taking this in payment for his drawings, because, and it must have been new when it was given to him at that time, because it's actually a very pretty vase by a company called Royal Lancastrian. It's by an artist called William Mycock. And if we turn it over and look, it is actually, it's got a monogram there, of the artist's initials and it's also dated and I think it's 1926 so that would sort of fit in with what you were saying so at the time when your grandfather did these drawings he was given something very contemporary very new at the time and it's only years later that this stuff has started to be appreciated and it's got this lovely luster so they make luster by firing copper in in the kiln and it gives it this lovely sort of almost like petrol like sheen on it and it's also a gorgeous shape. It's slightly in what I would call sort of the Persian taste with this decoration going around it. And I like the colours. I've seen them, these vases before in brighter colours than this. Um, and it might not be everybody's choice of colour, to be perfectly honest, but it's that sort of mustard colour, the way it goes into the rouge, I like, and I think it's very nice. And what's also very important about this is that all the gilding on it here, all this decoration is intact. It hasn't been rubbed off. No. And the vase itself is in perfect condition. I think it's a very pretty piece of early 20th century pottery. Well, Max, goods of the moment, collectible. Yeah. I think it's absolutely super. It is the, the, the flavour of the month, this. How do you value it? Well, I've gone in at between 350 and 500, which I think is an average estimate. It, 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 it is the kind of piece which might just take off. A fairly careful estimate, knowing the commerciality of the goods, but also the independents have already gone with three to four, mm. which I think is a bit on the low side. I think on a good day, that could hit £600. But you need the yeah. combination of more than one person in the sale room competing. We both love it, and I know that Simon's going to really like it. Let's see what he puts on the table. I think what I'd better do is put some money down. I would like to pay you 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 20, 40, 60, 80, 200, 220 pounds. 220 pounds has gone on the table. That doesn't surprise me because Simon's a trier and he slipped in a fairly modest. Very uh, modest, yeah. <laughs> you heard what Max said, very modest. I need to get in there sharpish and just make sure that our seller knows we have something worth more than that. £220 as a starting offer. Here comes a man who's going to like this. Did you hear that? <laughs> starting offer. That's just to kid us a little bit. <laughs> Mycock, 1926, Royal Lancastrian. Oh, boy. Collectible, desirable, smart. Three to four, four to five. Got to be in that four to five and might be a little bit more. What's on the table at the moment is totally, totally unacceptable. I'm going to get out of the way now. Let's see what he puts on. Come on, then. Right, I've been told, haven't I? 240, 260, 280, 300. One, two, three, four, five. 400 pounds. Now, I think that's a great offer. David's going to come over and he's going to say to you, it's not enough. But trust me, it is. <laughs> no, I'm always... You know, you've got to be balanced here. You've got to be balanced with our seller. That's my job, to look after uh, the general public. But I've also got to consider my dealers, because on this show, they bring their own money, they spend it every week, they have to go out into the marketplace under difficult circumstances. 
sell it, return their money, make a profit, come back within a matter of weeks and do the same exercise all over again. I think Simon is smart enough to think, I ain't gonna let this one go. He's smiling across there. I'm gonna say, Simon, make it a little bit more difficult, my job, to persuade our seller to go to auction. That's what I'm saying. I just think of my mum, she's only a pensioner, and she's trying to save up to get a new porch. Ah. Uh, you know, you don't have to sell me this vase, Alex, because I love it. Yeah. I really do like it, and I'd really like to own it, and I don't want you to go to auction. I'm going to put down another £40, but I honestly would like to have bought it for the 400 because then I know I've definitely got a profit. And David's going to come over now and say that you should take the money. <laughs> Well, he's a shrewd character, isn't he? What I'm going to say is this. He has made it much more difficult. Do I advise you to go to the auction? Well, there is a chance that you'll get a collector or a professional dealer that will give. Even though the top estimate is 500, it might run to six, but it might not. And so I'm going to say, not a bad offer. But if you feel lucky, you know where to go. I'll be there at the auction waiting for you. I've made a really strong bid for this vase, and the one thing David didn't say then is what happens if it sells for four or four fifty. You know, I'm going to put down another ten pound. I'm going to make it four hundred and fifty pound, and I'd really like you to say yes to that. Yeah, I'm happy to be like that. You're happy to say yeah. yeah. You think your mum would be happy? I do. We can shake hands. Yep. Thank you for bringing in a lovely thing, and say thank you to your mum from me. I will. Thank you. Alex's mum will be chuffed. She got the 450 she was after. Now let's see which of our dealers' profit exceeded their expectations. One of them was head and shoulders above the rest, but it wasn't Karen. She couldn't bear to part with those £90 Teds. I'm going to have to try and sell them as a lot. That's going to be such hard work, but I'm going to do it. But in the end, only two of them went to a collector for £70. Big Ted still waiting for a new home, while Karen waits for a profit. Brenda didn't trump the other dealers either. When it came to the £450 brooch... <laughs> she may be shaking her head, but we don't care, because we know that's a cracking lot. <laughs> and she knew it too. That's why she kept it for herself. Cheeky. And Simon did the same with the £450 vase. Come on, folks, you'll never make a living that way. But do you remember the silver bowl? £300. I think we're getting closer. You know, you've got to leave a little bit for the next man, David. And after Simon stuck to his guns at 300 that little bit wasn't so little. David Hakeney had his arm twisted for the £110 watch. Any chance of another 20 I'll give another tenner. OK. And I'm going to try and earn a tenner. That's okay. what I'd probably earn out of it. But he made a bit more besides. He had his concerns with the frame of the £180 Whitby watercolour. A bit off the frame here, another yeah, tenner. Yeah, no, true, yeah. Another tenner, true. another tenner, take a look. But after spending £80 on repairs, he still saw a decent return. So, with David's profit almost double what our other three dealers have made altogether, he is our <laughs> dealer of the day. We've had a great day here in Stockport. Bags of atmosphere, a lot of action, buying and selling. We always like to see that on the programme. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.